ऑनलाइन वेबिनार सीरीज अंडर नेशनल एग्रीकल्चर हायर एजुकेशन प्रोजेक्ट ऑन द बिहाफ ऑफ नाहेब टीम आई वेलकम अवर ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर प्रोफेसर एस के राव सर एंड अवर गेस्ट स्पीकर टूडेज गेस्ट स्पीकर डॉक्टर नरेन दजलानी सर इट इज अ ग्रेट अपॉर्चुनिटी टू अस सर गिव द लेक्चर ऑन फ्लोरिकल्चर इन इंडिया एंड कोविड नाइन्टीन द वे फॉरवर्ड बिफोर वी गो टू लेक्चर आई रिक्वेस्ट टू अवर ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर सर टू गिव प्रेसिडेंशियल रिमार्क ऑन दिस वेबिनार सर प्लीज गुड इवनिंग टू एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर नरेंद्र ददलानी सर एंड अदर फैकल्टी मेंबर्स एंड माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड डॉक्टर शर्मा पी ए आई डी पी एन एच यू पी एंड ऑल अदर कोलीग्स इट इज ए वेरी गुड अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर अस टू डिजन एन एमिनेंट पर्सनैलिटी इन द सीड इंडस्ट्री एज वेल एज इन द फ्लोरिकल्चर सेक्टर ही हेड ए लॉन्ग स्टैंडिंग एक्सपीरियंस इन दीज टू एरियाज एंड सर्व मेनी इंडस्ट्रीज एंड मेनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस at the national and international level we are without taking much of uh, your time sir and i welcome you once again here we have a presentation we are eagerly waiting to, to understand and listen you about this today's uh, topic thank you very much sir for accepting our invitation and coming over here you have to come to gwalior also along with madam <laughs> thank you sir uh, thank you sir uh, before we starting the lecture of uh, dr narend dadlani sir Uh, I, I, I will give the brief uh, introduction of sir. Uh, Dr. Narend Kumar Dadlani is a horticulture ex expert with more than three and half decade of professional experience in the area of horticulture research and development. Yeah. Dr. Dadlani worked at uh, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi, during 1977 to 1999, with a slant in the Union. Ministry of Agriculture India 1994 to 1997 as Director of Horticulture Government of India engaged primarily in work related to horticulture development program uh, floriculture medicinal and aromatic plant mushroom and horticultural biotechnology programs in the country uh, Dr Dallani was associated as an industry expert with several government organization program like Planning Commission Agricultural and Processed Food Expert development at hd national horticulture board national horticulture mission of the ministry of agriculture several state government besides several corporate as consultant he led team of expert in preparing horticulture development plan for several state in the country from 1999 to 2009 sir worked as a freelance consultant serving both national and international united nation food and agriculture organization undp program program as international floriculture horticulture expert in india bangladesh myanmar vietnam advising vietnam advising on floriculture horticulture development he also served as the horticulture development specialist in international floriculture specialist for the adb associated agri business infrastructure development project in india and second crop diversification project in bangladesh respectively sir is presently an advisor with the indian chamber of food and agriculture and federation of seed industry of india He was the first director technical affair at the Asia and Pacific Seed Association the largest regional seed association in the world prior to his joining this important inter international seed industry position he served as director national seed association of india the apex seed industry association of the world's fifth largest seed economy he provided the technical back stopping for the nsai on various industry issues and was represented on important policy formulation committee of government of india sir has authored and uh, edited more than 100 publications including book invited book chapter technical production manual technical research bulletin scientific research paper and is recipient of several honor including indian agri business award 2018 lotus Puraskar of Indian Society of Ornamental Horticulture in 2010 and Florist India 2007 Award. 
for his outstanding contribution to floriculture research and development and all india kitchen garden association medal 1991 with this brief uh, in introduction i request to dadlani sir to start his lecture sir welcome sir thank you very much thank you very much i must uh, the outset thank the rajmata vijayaraj india kishi vidyalaya uh, for this opportunity to uh, interact with the students in the faculty of floriculture my sincere thanks to dr s k ram sir the vice chancellor his colleagues dr sanjay sharma and then uh, dr akhilesh singh and others for uh, providing me this chance to speak under this uh, particular program and i must thank my head for facilitating such knowledge dissemination uh, uh, with the students and the faculty i'm afraid my lecture is not a regular classroom lecture where uh, where you would learn something about for that way i thought particularly that let me um, present something some information which is not taught in the classroom but at the same time it is extremely important for all those who are engaged with historical chat and let me share the screen are you able to see the screen please yes sir okay so uh, uh, this is the, the pandemic uh, actually took us uh, took all of us into a dark tunnel one year before this today's lecture we had not even heard of covid-19 but then suddenly from march onwards we have not uh, discussed anything beyond covid-19 all the time every activity of our has been related to how to manage this particular uh, thing this was a time for sadness and grief for everyone uh, not only those who are in the industry of any kind but the general public at large at a stage when we can now we have reached a stage after one year or so when we can reflect on what happened and look for light at the end of this dark tunnel this is an statement which was released by the uh, international union for floriculture this is the worldwide floriculture industry because uh, the global cut flower industry is estimated at 75 billion pounds now that is the kind of industry which is there and that was affected and uh, uh, by this particular calamity and uh, in floriculture we must remember that the market is dependent on a very narrow market window the whole industry is dependent on a very short window uh, and this caused a extremely a difficult economic crisis to go through the negative this was from the flora culture international editor in their may june uh, issue last year they this was the statement which they said that this was comparable to a combination of 911 in us and the 2008 financial crisis and the 2010 eruption of ireland Iceland's uh, volcano. See, this is just to show that what was the magnitude of this particular thing. There has been a very brutal impact, and in some countries, the whole sector has been devastated. Uh, how does the corona affect the floriculture trade in uh, various countries? Here, I have given some figures, but then the Floriculture International they did an analysis. of 17 european union nations um, the it was done in uh, april 2020 and then what they said was that uh, in the european nation nations 4.1 billion euro was the loss of the floriculture industry cut flowers was the maximum sorry uh, pot plants was the maximum in terms of value cut flowers was about 1065 million euro and uh, the least was the bulbs which is a very major uh, floriculture product in uh, netherlands and other parts of the uh, european union 
this was the see netherlands kenya kenya is one of the largest uh, exporters it exports to 60 countries and supplies nearly 50% of the flowers the dutch auction dutch auction is considered to be the biggest market for flowers in the world and 70% of the cut uh, there was a 70% cut in the auction supplies because of this corona and daily loss was estimated at 300000 dollars china particularly because this is the place where the virus uh, was reported to have uh, originated and a uh, lot of countries put the restrictions on imports from china by the, the big markets they put restrictions on import from china india we have a small farmers and they suffered huge loss up to 100% loss was there the only positive thing which i find which has happened because of the corona thing was because of the air transportation was uh, stopped all over the world the uh, this led to the development of the sea freight line i am not going to discuss here much anything about the sea freight line see it is about now 10 15 years back that the shipments by sea it started initially it was assume that this is not possible because of the fact that uh, flowers are very highly perish perishable items and they will not last but then now with the breeding which is being done for a, a was life of let's say 12 days or whatever so even if it takes about 4 5 days in the shipments we have been getting um, sea transportation of flowers from south america to uh, europe and from Africa to Europe, and which has brought down the cost of freight uh, considerably. This was the only positive sign I find that this particular sea freight, uh, sea transportation has increased. Indian uh, floriculture truly crumbled due to this COVID-19. Uh, these are some figures uh, which are there because what uh, you would see here is that the, all the stakeholders, whether it is flower growers, traders, decorators, associated industry, uh, associated industry would mean um, uh, something like this accessories, the foams, wraps, ribbons and other things. And decorators, I must mention here in a place like Delhi, which is a huge market for flowers in our country. We have decorators who come from Kolkata and Agra who have come and established their business in, in, in Delhi. Now, once uh, the Corona thing happened, they've all gone back and most of them say that they don't intend to come back now here. And in terms of floriculture trade collapsing, uh, there is one uh, international flower auction in Bangalore, uh, in Hebel area near the university. And, um, and there what Daily, they used to receive about 2 lakh flowers uh, before the COVID started. Mainly, it is rose, carnations, and gladness. Uh, but mainly, it is rose there. So they used to receive about 2 lakh flowers every day. And after the corona thing, once the lockdown was lifted, it was somewhere in July, August, they were receiving only still receiving about eighteen to 20,000 flowers. Now, slowly it has increased and now they are getting some flowers because people wanted, the flower growers wanted to sell at this uh, auction center in uh, Bangalore. Primarily because the price, for instance, for rose, they used to get a price of about 4 rupees 50 paise, whereas outside it was less than 2 rupees, which they used to get for per bloom. Since there was no transportation available, no flowers were reaching this place. In the previous slide also, I had mentioned about livelihood crisis because most of the workers which are there in the farms all over the country, they come from mainly from Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and some of these uh, <coughs> countries where these poor masses live in villages. So they had all traveled to these places for flower production, which are important centers for flower production. And they all migrated back to their native places and their children education was disrupted because they have to go back suddenly because the crisis the schools were closed and everything was 
shut down. Now here I have tried to, uh, you must realize that this uh, thing affected from Kashmir to Kerala and then from Maharashtra to let's say Northeast. The whole country was affected by this. Here I have given some statements um, by some of the people, the farmers, flower growers basically. Uh, in, in Kashmir they said that we have to throw the flowers. But Varanasi, it, there is a lot of flower sale around the temples. And uh, it is considered, it is reported that the daily sale, the daily turnover of the flower sales there is about 20 lakh rupees, which is a huge thing. It is more important because there are a lot of people who are engaged with this. So they may be earning in few thousands every day, but then the thing is that everybody was totally, this whole thing was totally disrupted. Haryana destroying lily in six acres as no market was there. This is a, an effect because uh, this was Haryana. They started as a uh, instance of crop diversification. They started growing lily in, in the plains. And it was a very successful venture which had started. There are similar such ventures uh, elsewhere also which have been affected. So when people talked about crop diversification to in, improve the income of the uh, floriculture farmers and all these things was disrupted. Now Shrikant's statement, he is a trader. Shrikant is the, sorry, Shrikant is an exporter. And he, 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 according to his statement, which was reported in the newspapers, that they had to throw away flowers worth rupees 10 lakh of uh, worth of rupees. Primarily because they could not export anything because all the airlines were shut down. Now, Gujarat thing uh, is, uh, see, they were left with no, because they make their total earnings in the annual <coughs> thing they make in within those three months when they market their flowers. Because of the lockdown, they had no those earnings. This not only affected their uh, livelihood for the year, but also they were left with no money for the next season. Now, in addition to this, you would realize that all over the country, we have farmers, small farmers basically, who are supplying you know, for the home puja. Uh, in many cities, we find that somebody goes around distributing a package every day in the early in the morning for people to worship their gods or goddesses at home. And this is a very small uh, priced package which people sell. But the only thing is that since the number of packages which are sold in a city are huge and there are several people involved uh, in this particular exercise. See, all this was stopped because there was the movement of the people was restricted totally. And one more thing which one has to understand is in an Indian context, the flower trade is mainly dependent on the marriages because those are the time uh, uh, when most of the uh, large quantities of flowers are being used in decoration and uh, in offering to people and things like that. And as well as the other social function, including the religious ceremonies which are there in the temples. Now, since marriages were stopped and since uh, uh, this uh, social functions, including the religious uh, temples and everybody, all the religious places were closed down. There was no sale of flowers there, which was a huge revenue loss. Here I have given from Uttarakhand, from UP, from Himachal Pradesh, from Tamil Nadu, and uh, from uh, Kerala. Kerala Florist Association, of course, they, they are the traders. Now, you see, the thing is, in, um, in Uttarakhand, once this lockdown was there and the bad weather con conditions, the flower farms were affected. The government came out with showing concern and they promised support. But uh, uh, as far as my knowledge goes, that support has not flown down to the farmers as even now. In Himachal Pradesh, uh, a total village is devoted to growing the flowers. This Jhajja village is, uh, most of the people there are farmers, there are growing flowers. 
which they send it to various uh, towns and cities in Himachal and as well as to Delhi and Punjab. And they had no earning, the whole village was devastated. There was no earning for anybody there. Now, in terms of uh, Tamil Nadu, the example here is from somebody who is going for export. And what they realized was that the, once the exports are affected, the greenhouse uh, management has to continue. You have to continue to maintain, manage the greenhouses to grow the flowers for the next season. And that greenhouse cost is something like 1.5 lakh per acre. Now, that uh, cost they will have to continue to bear whether they are able to sell any flowers or not. The Florist Association in Trivandapuram in Kerala, this is there that it will be not be able to recover in the last, in the next six months. This was the statement which they made in July. I was talking to a friend of mine in Kerala uh, two weeks back and they said that the traders, most of the traders have now wound up with their business and the workers, because the workers have not returned, uh, those workers who sell the flowers at these uh, florist shops and other places, they have just not returned. So that is the uh, irony. Irony of the sector is that the flower petals showered on Corona warriors on 1st May. The government announced, the chief of army staff had announced that we will uh, shower the petals on all those people who had uh, supported uh, this uh, controlling this pandemic. Uh, but then uh, who will shower the flower for the farmers? February to June is the peak market season. And this was lost due to the lockdown. The flowers which you are showering on people, the, it is, the money is not going to any of the farmers. Because it is, in India, it is still uh, not considered as an essential product in terms of food security or whatever. So it is not a food item. So it is a non-essential product. And uh, the farmers have now really lost out totally in terms of See, this is a, uh, a picture of the auction center in Holland. Now you can imagine the size, looking at the picture, you can imagine the size of this ground. This Here, the uh, storage spaces, uh, this is one of the storage area. The storage areas are not uh, measured in terms of square meter. They always say that it is in one football ground or two football grounds and things like that. So you can imagine the size of the storage is area and the number of this these are the crates in the trolleys which are there which goes to the auction center now you find from all the crates the flowers are being done because there is no market there are no buyers there in the market the flowers these are all the flowers which were uh, grown locally or transported from areas in europe where there was uh, transport, uh, the road transport was uh, available. So all those people were sending the flowers to the auction centers in Holland, but then um, there were no buyers, so they had to dump everything. This was the condition in uh, in India. This is a picture from India. On the left hand side, you find a trolley full of jabra uh, flowers being taken to the market. And uh, this is the normal conditions. This is the uh, stage of things. Several uh, truckloads of flowers are being sent to the market from all the major production centers. This is a picture from Maharashtra. Now, the next picture, picture on the right, is that everything has been dumped because there is no market to take the flowers. This was a common site near major production center. And not only for Jarbara, for, but for other crops also. Now this is for uh, marigold you find here on the left the lady is picking up the marigolds. This is in uh, this is the picture from Dahod Taluka in Mar Gujarat where it was started as a diversification option for migrant laborers who used to work in the cities. They all came back to their village uh, listening to what our Honorable Prime Minister and other people are saying, that uh, you should not migrate to the cities for jobs, but 
be in your contribute to your development of your own village and they all came back and they started growing flowers but then your next picture you see that it is being um, fed to the animals this is flowers are not animal feed we must understand this see this i was mentioning about the picture i showed this was the patelia adivasi community in gujarat there was a shift from city migrant labors to floriculture in dahod taluka where they were growing marigold and uh, desi rose which they growing about uh, 1350 hectares now that was a large area in couple of villages which was taken up for floriculture because they wanted to diversify into agriculture flower farming from being migrant laborers and now they all uh, suddenly the whole thing collapsed uh, there was uh, in um, maharashtra also close to the western ghat people started shifting from on the advice of the government and the universities shifting from sugarcane which was not that much paying uh, because of various uh, reasons to jasmine growing which was which grows very well there and now suddenly they realized that th there was no takers for uh, flowers because sugarcane if they were there they could have stored all the sugarcane they could have shifted somehow in their uh, balgadis to the sugar factories where they could have received the money later on but with jasmine the flowers they had to dump mawal tehsil in narashtra near pune on the pune bombay highway is a tehsil which is totally devoted to floriculture there the agro industries corporation had uh, developed the, the whole uh, floriculture center now um, the whole thing was shut down shut down i have a few friends in that area and i spoke to them they said that there is nothing is working some people had diversified couple of years back into growing up uh, vegetables in the greenhouses and they said that there is uh, no movement there is no labor available the whole place is shut down and then from in delhi area there are lot of uh, people from villagers from up and then uh, from bihar uh, they have taken land on lease long lease and they pay up to 1.5 lakh or sorry one of the for last happening for the last 20 years or so and one of the farmers uh, i had met uh, in the month of august i believe august or september and he mentioned that he was at the delhi market and he mentioned that he had taken a land on lease x per year for that land and he said that i used to make good money and send it to my village during the started get once the market was closed i closed on my farm and went back to my village and he had just come see it was just opening up but he said that now i have no crop to feed the market and uh, similarly people in himachal also they have taken land on lease the the farmers are basically from bihar and himachal uh, up particularly the native areas and they have taken land in himachal and there was no market for the flowers which they had grown so they had to dump everything there in uh, uttar pradesh chatisgarh gujarat uttarakhand himachal pradesh these are the areas where the floriculture business is growing now here also there was uh, the the all the national efforts at the expansion they had to it had went to go, go waste even in the major states which are there maharashtra tamil nadu karnataka there has been um, lot of damage to the floriculture plantations now here how does the covid 19 has affected floriculture there were no farm visits the farms were neglected which mainly which was a matter of concern was it affected the plant health so now the plant were in a condition that they would not be producing good flowers the next season once the lockdown was over or the now the things have started coming back to slowly coming back to the market for head open but then the plants uh, lack the health or the vigor to produce the flowers for the market 
Now, all the religious places, as I had mentioned, were closed. Weddings were off, so there was no market. There are a lot of uh, planting material which is transported every year for the growers. Uh, particularly, you know, the growers in the northeastern region, they grow a lot of uh, gerberas, carnations, and anthurians. And the planting material is transported there um, by people from Pune and Bangalore areas. But because of the restricted tra transportation, none of the planting material for the next season was sent there. They had no cash because there were no sales. There were no cash for the operations. Valentine sale, fortunately, Valentine was good this year, last year. And February, Valentine was over before the uh, effect of the pandemic were felt uh, anywhere in the world, mainly in India. But then the all the sale money from the Valentine, they were not paid back to the farmers by the time the growers by the time the pandemic uh, resulted. And then their payments were uh, delayed and almost for six to eight months with the result that they could not grow the next crop. They had people, a lot of people have taken loans from the banks. So there were a lot of EMIs which were pending, which could not be paid because there were no cash flow uh, in their farms. So they could not pay back the loans. There was tremendous labor shortage because we do realize that in most of the industries, there are people from uh, Eastern Uttar Pradesh, mainly from Eastern Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, and even from uh, West Bengal, particularly in the floriculture market in Delhi and other places. And all those people, slowly they closed shop and they went back, migrated back to their native places. Because I met, uh, there has been a somebody, some people who have been coming from West Bengal the Panskura area, which is a major flower growing area. They have been in the Delhi market. I've been meeting them for the last 20 years. And I once I met them last time in September or so. And um, they said that we have just come back. We are just assessing it. And uh, because they said that the regular train service has not started. So we came by a special uh, train because we are migrant laborers, uh, saying that we are laborers from Delhi. They came back but then they said that now uh, where do we get our produce from they, it, it really caused uh, a lot of problems particularly for exports because there were no laborers now see the laborers are required for garland making they are for loading and loading at the railway stations at the airports at the bus stations where the flowers arrive they um, load the material from the production centers and they unload it in uh, Delhi or the major markets and then they transport it to the market areas. And the sellers also because of the religious places and other places were closed down as I gave an example of Varanasi particularly. So the thing, the whole sector uh, was, it was very difficult to cut costs because as I mentioned about greenhouses and other things, they, you can't close them down. You have to continue the operations there. People had to continue the operations of their uh, farms for the next season, hoping that the next season they will be able to sell something. But now they have to go on feeding the plants and other things. And with no uh, cash flow, it was very difficult to maintain those things. Green, greenhouse, as I mentioned, it was a very big, difficult thing. Now, this is a picture of greenhouse management. Now. This was done only because the flowers were there and how to, where to spend labor on harvesting the flowers and throwing them. So they let the cows enter the, the cattle enter the greenhouses to eat the flowers and eat the, the things so that then they can just close the, down everything because, because there was no labor for harvest. Now when we come to what was done to take care of this to save us from all these problems. This was a question in the European Parliament. And uh, Europe has 10% of the world's area and 44% of the world's flower and pot plant production. High density of flower production, flower production per hectare is there. And that is the reason, uh, 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 um, this was the importance of the industry which made a member of parliament 
to uh, raise this question in the European Parliament. In India, most of the legislators, whether they are member of parliament or member of legislative assemblies, they do not consider uh, floriculture to be an important uh, area. And the flower farms are not really known to be uh, producing the flowers. because And there is no appreciation because whether we like it or not, most of these our politicians, they need a couple of garlands around their neck every day and a few bouquets to be presented to them. And since they don't pay for those garlands or bouquets, they cannot be uh, expected to appreciate uh, what has been the loss to those who are growing it. And daily offerings they used to get free and which now they were not getting. Uh, globally, these are the some of the examples that in various countries, the various in you know, various forms, the government came out to uh, support uh, the flower growers. See, Netherlands, where 70% of the turnover was lost, if the sales were down 30% down over the same period last year, they will be given certain uh, allowances. Now, uh, in other countries also, um, I have mentioned as to how uh, special support loans were given and um, wages uh, for the people, they were paid by the government uh, uh, funding. Many other countries in Europe and Africa, they also are plan planning and executing a lot of ways of supporting the uh, flower growers and flower producers and flower marketing people. In uh, India, most uh, Indian floriculture is unorganized. So they are not recognized by the Prime Minister's Kishi Yojana. And uh, similarly, agriculture being a state subject, it is the state's responsibility to develop plans. Niti Aayog had developed a strategy for New India uh, and uh, at 2000, uh, when we complete 75 years of our independence, the encouraging diversification into high value crops, which include the flowers. And several states took up this program, and I mentioned the example in uh, Maharashtra and Gujarat and other places. But then all that is now lost. Himachal Push Kanti Yojana was introduced in 2018. Uh, under that program, the Himachal farmers they got some support because that is just to revolutionize the flower production in the state that the, uh, the, the state had initiated this particular scheme in 2018. And when this COVID thing happened, some support was provided. Uh, Kashmir government has been support, providing support for the lavender growing, particularly in Doda and Kishwar districts for extracting the uh, lavender oil, which is uh, very much in demand in the world market for the perfumery and the cosmetic industry. But then, uh, and then, but then, uh, but in India, one of the things which is lacking is there is no uh, promotion of the floriculture sector. I have given an example of KFC. KFC is uh, the Kenya Flower Council because they take up the issues of the all the flower growers with the government, not only in Kenya but in the other African nations also, and th then the uh, government decides about the policies of support for the flower growers because these flower farmers are getting so much of revenue for the foreign exchange for the country. So uh, the Kenya Flower Council works with the government there to develop the policies. Uh, one of the things which happened in uh, Tamil Nadu was that MS Swaminathan Research Foundation, they brought out a floriculture policy brief because in Tamil Nadu, uh, which is the largest producer of loose flowers, mainly jasmine and chrysanthemum and crocendra and other things. And they are all very small farmers. For that, MSSRF brought out a policy brief, which the government of Tamil Nadu uh, took up. Uh, the state responded very quickly to an effect on the standing crop, as well as for the next crops, what support should be provided uh, as per a policy. Um, this policy also, uh, you talked about the plant and the soil health because uh, floriculture is a continuous activity. 
then providing options for mix and intercropping in other crops with other crops if it can be done then connecting the farmers to the factories and extraction unit as i was mentioning that jasmine and other things are uh, tuberose and jasmine they are very major loose flowers in tamil nadu and there are a lot of uh, factories uh, around particularly in the near coimbatore in the uti area uh, which are extracting the uh, jasmine um, uh, oil and the tuberose oil for the industries the government needs to recognize floriculture uh, as an important sector it may not be a food security crop but it is definitely much much important for the livelihood security because one of the things which the agriculture ministry all over in all the other states also in all the states has been recognizing that if we have to uh, attain that goal of doubling the farmers income uh, by 2022 which is only next year uh, one of the major options in terms of crops would be the flower crops which can give you a very high income and that is uh, an option for improving the farmers income and then uh, the government also needs to restructure the loans and the lease payments and moratorium on the payments and the principals and wherever possible they should provide the waivers because what we have realized is uh, if you study the analyze the data of the loan waivers which generally happens after every election in the states and this is mainly for those people who are growing their staple crops like wheat rice or maize and other palm millet and other things but not for flower growers because they are never considered because it's very unorganized sector and uh, flower crops are never considered flower farmers are never considered to be important people uh, here i had just made a suggestion that long back it was in 90s uh, that uh, six agri export zones were uh, approved for uh, related to floriculture now none of them have taken off in the way it was expected and they are kind of closed down so uh, it would be nice if those can be revived and then uh, those could be relocated to major production zones and uh, with the revised plans for uh, the flower farmers and uh, in terms of cost effective product uh, production uh, earlier the greenhouse technology we had Im imported from uh, europe and from uh, israel but now under the national horticulture mission program a lot of uh, support is being provided and most of the states you find a lot of greenhouses for flower growing coming up so it is necessary that we provide them with the support which is required uh this was the fao recommendations to government of india now immediate registration of flower farmers under the pm kisan scheme which i had mentioned it was not there earlier so that once they are registered as the farmers then they will be getting the direct uh, benefit uh, transfer which is there which was there that 6000 rupees per year so that would be Uh, and uh, new norms should be worked out for the flowers because flowers it should be higher and then they should provide the immediate relief uh, considering floriculture farmer to be an essential farmer community and provide compensation to the affected labor not only for the migrant labor for the other things and also consider the laborers who are engaged in flower farming under the m rega and uh, since the flowers are perishables then under the fasal bima yojana we need to kind of subsidize the premium for their their and they were these are the further the other recommendations which were made by fao to government of india for floriculture sector and then the task force to prioritize the assistance to affected areas and rebuild the plans for the sector before the next season now this unfortunately as far as my knowledge goes it has not happened because the next season came and went back uh, went away in uh, autumn season production the rabi season growing so but then uh, it is very unfortunate we have lot of exports 
but uh, uh, we export more than 570 crores, which is much less than the, uh, the potential we have. The, the government should support through refrigerated transportation and the cool chain management, custom clearances. And uh, when the China uh, imports were banned by several importing countries, um, those were the gaps which were there in the market. Those should be filled up by support the uh, pharma farmers to fill up those gaps by uh, removing the restrictions on imports. And particularly because one of the things which came up at that particular time was that all the imports had to be accompanied by a COVID free certificate. Now, Corona free certification, it took time and it took effort because in India, a lot of people were not even aware of as to how to go about it. These regulations and the support is required. In terms of product diversification, local specialties, depending upon the climate and the demand should be there. The Directorate of Floriculture Research uh, had organized a webinar, I think it was somewhere in June, July, where they talked about the indigenous ornamentals. Now we need to really seriously think about uh, indigenous ornamentals and develop a supply chain. Because what we realize is that all of us have been growing crops like rose or gladiolus or carnations and kathangon. None of those are Indian crops, basically. We have been growing because we always feel that we'll be able to export. But then there's such a market, the huge market exists in the country. And uh, uh, we have not been able to develop a supply chain and the ma market for our own indigenous products. So that needs to be done. The perishable products are very, very, the flower, most of the flowers, except maybe marigold or chrysanthemum, the cut greens, those are the cut leaves which are sold in the market, the indoor plants, these may not be perishable. So these need to be support, uh, has to be provided. There were a lot of uh, multiple use products. For instance, one example I'll give is marigold. Marigold is sold as a flower. It is sold as loose flower for garland making and other things. Then marigold, we also extract organic colors for the textile industry. We also extract lutein pigment for the food and the pharma sector. And uh, uh, marigold uh, is used as a feed in the poultry industry because it improves the yellowness of the yolk in the poultry industry. Now, similarly, propagating material, uh, the sale and the expansion of uh, the propagating material sales has to be supported by the government, then public goods for public good. You see, because uh, we need to highlight the importance. I have always been talking about growing of Indian roses in the Rashpati Bhavan. Rashpati Bhavan has a Mughal garden, and there has got a uh, separate dedicated rose garden there. So why not we grow only Indian roses there, so that any visitor from outside, if the president of India or whosoever is showing them around, Tell them that these are the varieties known in India and produced in India. You know, that will bring a lot of credit to our uh, own flower growers and uh, uh, flower researchers. Similarly, for governor's houses also. Bedding plants uh, is a big industry in USA. Not much important. Branding is very, very important. When this uh, export quality roses were grown, and the first company which started growing was a company owned by Tata's. So everybody used to call these as Tata roses. If you go to any market, rose flowers for export produced by any company, they were known as Tata roses. Like that, we can develop some branding for Kerala orchids, Northeastern anthuriums, and things like that. Market channel diversification. Uh, by this, I mean that the auction centers, I have talked about the Bangalore uh, International Flower Auction Center in Bangalore. Similar one is being opened at Hosur, which is in Tamil Nadu, but that's on the Bangalore border. That is also going to come in. Such similar auction centers, they always uh, provide a better price to the farmers as compared to the selling them in the open market. There's the existing market infrastructure, which is their Gajipur flower market, in Delhi is a huge market, big market, one of the biggest market in India for flowers. Similarly, Pune flower market is also very big. So these, the facilities there 
should be infrastructure should be strengthened offer space in the local market for flower growers lot of uh, you know taking on the example of the andhra market the raitu markets where weekly hats are used there some marketing structures are there where people can come and sell their produce mainly vegetables and other things they there we should also provide space to the flower grower there now uh, spot sales are there spot sales means you do get less price but then there is no transportation required for you to take the flowers to the market and then save time for the farmers the farmers can devote that time on their farms online sales the quality price and reliability this has to be encouraged but at the same time because we have to realize that uh, there should be no cheating because i have uh, purchased uh, bundles of carnations or gladlas bunches where there's the flowers are there you can count there are 20 flowers or uh, a dozen of flowers but you you found that the, there is no stem in some of them or very short stem so these kind of things need to be avoided and donate what you can't sell this was the mantra during the covid time there was a, a floriculture international webinar somewhere in, uh, in the beginning maybe uh, april may where a gentleman from westerly orchid which is a major orchid uh, company in usa they said that they had taken the goal of providing 1 lakh phalaenopsis uh, potted uh, orchids to the health workers uh, during the time because they were they were Um, having no more international sales for their produce now i say that say it with flowers uh, because we have to encourage the corporates to regularly give flowers to doctors nurses and other health workers other frontline workers as a csr activity they can give it as a um, uh, kind of a uh, just a, um, um, saying thanks to all these people so they should be regularly gifting it under their csr activities and the flower grower associations have to arrange regular delivery of flower it started a little bit in the housing societies in metros particularly in bangalore and to some extent in delhi it did start where uh, there is to be uh, regularly somebody some vendors will come for uh, selling vegetables and other things fruits and vegetables and they will also carry some flowers so people could buy from them now the flower grower associations have to arrange and uh, support this kind of thing indoor in terms of way forward indoor agriculture is one of the things we talk about vertical vertical farms Uh, because these are close to the urban uh, areas and re this reduces the transportation and other logistics specialty products small pots for table decoration i remember in the early 90s maharaja patela the then maharaja patela had started a farm in himachal in chal area where they used to produce some chrysanthemums pot chrysanthemums those were very small pots 4 uh, inches to 6 4 inches diameter which they used to sell in delhi and other markets and those uh, were growing they were growing only chrysanthemums and those were small chrysanthemums and the pot was costing around those, those days around 100 rupees and it would last for 2 3 weeks so people thought that it was a good idea to have uh, flowers on your table for 2 3 weeks in 100 rupees which was a good thing container ornamentals are mainly mean the potted plants there is a craze which is growing for potted plants particularly for flowering ones i would like to indulge uh, seek your indulgence here and give an example in delhi in the extreme summer months in the month of may june i was asked by a lady who was was visiting that can we grow orchids here i said no you cannot grow in delhi climate or orchids but then he said that but i have seen some in somebody's house so i told them that i can get you a plants Uh, which you can grow in they said that how much it will cost those days in the 90s it was about 250 rupees she said that it will flower i said yes it will flower because there were a lot of flowers flowering orchids were 
being imported from uh, northeastern areas, which will have the, uh, the flowering primordia already initiated. Flowering has been initiated. Once it provides the warmth, you know, it will, the flower will be there. There will be no more flowers coming after that, and uh, the plant will die. But then the lady said that I have a kitty party in my house the next week. So if I if the flower around that time, I don't mind spending 250 rupees. Now that kind of the craze, people who have money, they can afford to uh, spend on these things. Go green solution. There are a lot of solutions which are now being proposed. This is what we call a circular economy. Now a lot of flowers are being dumped. You may have read about it. You may have heard about it. There are several agencies, Help Us Green, Fool, Bangalore unit for handmade paper, they, all the flowers which are dumped uh, in the temples, because after the um, um, it is offered in the temples, they dump all those flowers, they generally throw in the Ganges, all along the Ganges we have the cities which have all, most of the temples, and they cause pollution in the rivers, but then now people have started up, startups were there which said that from the help us green is a unit and the fool also is in the fool is a unit in Uttar Pradesh. I think it is in Kanpur. There is a Bangalore unit. There is a Ahmedabad based. There were a couple of graduates which uh, tied up with the Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation and uh, under a project from the Gujarat Technical University, they developed a machine for converting temple flowers into manure. Now Go Green is also an organization which uh, collects all the flowers from the temples and the mosques. Uh, they have now tied up, particularly from Golden Temple in Amritsar and the Azmer Sharif Darga and the Shakti Kalyan uh, Mahaganpati Temple in Karnataka. And all these uh, flower petals, they convert into composts. Now, this is called a circular economy. You grow the flowers, they are offered, they are used once, they get a price. Uh, and they generate some revenue, but after its uh, use is over, then they can again develop into products, which I have used uh, from this full company, uh, some of the incense sticks, and they are very, very nice. Now, this is what I say, flowers to compost, uh, what has been started in um, uh, Gujarat, but then, um, uh, but this is not the Go Green is doing it. But I would say that flowers, the first use has to be uh, for uh, home and personal decoration or offering to for religious purposes, which it did not happen during the COVID time. But of course, it can be now converted into compost. These are kind of suggestions, research institutes, state agriculture universities. You have a lot of uh, technology information which you have there, that development, development and the knowledge which you can share with the entrepreneurs and you can pr promote the best practices for the growers. And uh, this is the second one is very important. There is an agriculture skill council of India. Our government has been talking about a skill development and I have been interacting. I have been in the uh, governing council of agriculture skill council of India for four or five years. And I realized that the skill sets for Floriculture are missing, kind of missing. They have now developed some programs for the pre and post harvest, post production um, skills. But then you see, uh, there are uh, rose budding, for instance. Some people can bud uh, 10 um, uh, buds in a, uh, sorry, sorry, 50 buds in a day. But then some people can go a couple of hundreds. Now, you see, you develop the skills. And then similarly for harvesting, similarly for garland making, and all these things, the skill council, you have to develop the skill sets among the growers and the others. American horticulture, they developed a program at Cultivate 20, whereas uh, Utah uh, University and Michigan State University, and uh, sorry, it was the University of Florida, not Utah, and Michigan State Universities, they had a grow, uh, greenhouse growers career development programs. American floral endowments, they also created a platform for industry and job seekers to connect them to the industry which needed people and the people who had lost jobs during pandemic, and they were able to get connected. Now, there are a lot of programs 
where the um, AI is being used in floriculture, whether it is um, um, what should I, robots for uh, uh, harvesting and um, DFR has also uh, developed COVID uh, guidelines in our country. And then, see, uh, this uh, AI based crop advisors are there, robots are there for harvesting, for planting, for rose pruning. There are drones for field mapping, crop scouting for diseases and other things, monitoring the yield, robots for weed and insect control, which are uh, being used in the other countries. Then uh, greenhouse sensors during the um, pandemic, there were sensors which were used because there was no labor available. So in India, of course, it is uh, less prevalent. The government support is there for digitization of farm processes. Because in India, automation is limited because the farms are very small. So mechanization becomes difficult. Uh, but then uh, if we use the artificial intelligence in um, through the other things, this would be very helpful. I uh, particularly feel the farmers everywhere, like everywhere in India also, they are very resilient and we will be able to overcome in the, in the pandemic which has gone. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rao. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Sharma. Thank you so much, everybody who had been patiently listening for uh, an hour or so. I was told that I, I had expected that I will finish uh, in 40, 45 minutes. But unfortunately, because uh, see, uh, I'm sorry, the floriculture is my passion. Even the last 10 years I've been working with the seed industry, floriculture continues to be my passion. And then I get, uh, I lose track of time when I'm talking about floriculture. And this particular topic was, uh, we must understand is uh, the kind of uh, loss which has happened to the uh, flower sector. I had lost on track of the time. I'm sorry, my apologies to everybody for exceeding my time. Thank you so much once again. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope I have been able to give some some new knowledge to your students. Very, very knowledge and very informative and uh, entirely different type of uh, knowledge mm -hmm. we gain today within one hour. And it Thank takes a lot of time to understand all these things. And uh, once, the thing, once the things improve, situation yeah. improve, I'll yeah. uh, take, take your invitation to come to Gwalior. Definitely, sir. And, and then interact with the students there. I'd love to. Definitely, sir. Definitely, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, hello, Akhish. Akhlesh? Okay, sir. Uh, on behalf of... Uh, yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, now I request to Dr. Sanjay Sarma, sir, PI of NHEP IDP project to conclude the session. Sir, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Akhlesh, sir. Uh, on behalf of RVSKVB Golier, uh, and uh, also on behalf of NHEP uh, RBSK BB Golier, I extend my sincere thanks to today's guest speaker, uh, um, um, Dr. Narendra Dadlani ji, uh, for his excellent uh, uh, talk on a uh, uh, very important topic of floriculture in India and uh, how it has been affected uh, by COVID-19 as the whole world is affected. Similarly, the floriculture has also been affected tremendously by COVID-19. Uh, he has given 
brief account how this COVID-19, uh, what are what were the important uh, factors which have affected floriculture, especially like uh, transportation, uh, no farm visits, uh, no market availability, non-availability of uh, uh, planting materials to the farmers. All these factors uh, were responsible and has affected uh, this floriculture adversely. Uh, after that, he has given uh, the account of floriculture in India, and we all know this is one of the most uh, um, growing uh, field. Uh, uh, recent trends in India floriculture market have projected the booming uh, industry in uh, uh, um, uh, to reach around uh, forty-seven thousand crores by 2020 with a uh, compound uh, annual growth rate of 20 percent uh, during 2019 to 2024. Uh, so this is one of the most uh, uh, promising field, uh, not only for um, uh, for a production point of view, from um, a livelihood security point of view, uh, it is good for our uh, youth also for uh, um, uh, developing entrepreneurship in this particular uh, field. Uh, in recent years, the revolutionary changes in the form of digitization, artificial intelligence, and um, uh, other options, uh, the and this unorganized sector of flower business has made its place as one of the best options uh, for investment, I think, uh, uh, in the recent uh, terms. And in, uh, our Indians' uh, uh, climate um, and advanced uh, techniques, all these things, abundant um, abundance of healthy soil, high profit, uh, profitability, low labor cost compared to other countries, uh, government support, all these are also plus points for this uh, um, uh, floriculture field and uh, for developing entrepreneurship in this particular field. A very li little efforts have been made uh, uh, on entrepreneurship development uh, among the women farmers. Uh, the tendency to be an entrepreneur um, uh, empower women and enable them to gain from commercial agriculture, especially floriculture, is very, very important. There is a tremendous opportunity in floriculture trade uh, at entrepreneurship level for um, everybody and especially for women of uh, um, women farmers. Uh, besides grooming and uh, selling cut flowers, women can set up uh, small enterprises where value addition can made it uh, uh, made uh, like exports, trade in um, dried flowers uh, is also on the rise. The woman can uh, uh, easily uh, tap this opportunity, I think, this floriculture. Uh, the, all the details has given uh, by, uh, by um, uh, today's guest speaker are very, very important for all the students and faculty members, researchers, extension workers, um, and also for entrepreneurs who are involved in this floriculture industry. So um, uh, I once again thank you, sir, um, very much for your detail and very nice lecture. Uh, so um, uh, over to uh, Akhilesh, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, now I request to Dr. Siv Kumar Singh Bhadoria, this is the state of the project. We will give the word of time. Uh, thank you, sir. Good evening to all of you. Myself, Siv Kumar Singh Bhadoria, research associate, Nahe project, RBSKVB Gwalior. It is my honor and privilege now to give a vote of thanks to all those who helped make the webinar success. First and foremost, I would like to thank our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor S.K. Rao, sir, for giving us the opportunity to gather virtually today as well as giving valuable time to us from his busy schedule. I would like to heartfelt thanks to Dr. Naren Dadlani ji, International Consultant, seed business floriculture to boost up knowledge and improve skill of our students and faculty members about seed business of floricultural crops. I would like to thank Dr. S.K. Sarma sir, PI Nahe project for organizing this valuable webinar. I would like to thank Dr. Akhilesh Singh, co-PI of this project for providing technical facilities to organize this webinar. I would like to thank our coordinators and co-coordinators of NAHE project for informing to students about this webinar. I would like to thank the students, faculty members, or other members who have participated in this webinar for listening our speaker with patience and interact with him. Last but not least, I would like to thank everyone who helped to organize organizing this webinar, thank 
all of you again thank you very much thank you dr bhadoria uh, shall i uh, close the sir session namaskar sir thank you very much sir thank you very much thank you dr rao thank you very much thank, thank you, you sir thank you thank you sir thank you